2021 was a roller coaster ride for Sumo, and with all of us feeling like time is warped because of the pandemic, where there are so many things happening, yet simultaneously it seems nothing momentous really happens in our own daily routines, in 2021, the world of Sumo also reflected this weird relationship we are all having with time. The six grand sumo tournaments spaced out every two months of each other took place the same way it could during a global pandemic. We saw the same sumo wrestlers do their best in the same clay ring. But looking closer, every tournament in 2021 marked milestones in sumo. We saw history being written right before our eyes. We saw the impossible happen, the ending of an era, and the start of a new one. Despite the monotony that is expected from the pseudo-religious national sport of Japan, last year was full of change for Grand Sumo Wrestling, especially for the highest rank of sumo, the rank of Yokozuna. But for the fans who discovered sumo in this year, it seemed the fanfare didn't extend to the rank immediately below it, the rank of Ozeki. With the rank originally being the highest rank attainable in sumo, it's supposed to hold the same prestige. Ozeki means champion rank after all. But the performances we've seen from the Ozeki last year felt as if the days where that line between the two highest ranks were indistinguishable are over. A decade ago, every Ozeki was a powerful contender for the tournament championship. They were prominent challengers to the almighty Yokozuna, spawning rivalries that drove every sumo fan to the edge of their seats in every tournament. Nowadays, with one Ozeki falling from grace because of breaking COVID protocols, another being injury prone, and the other barely meeting expectations, sumo fans have to sift through the top division to get their fill for powerful bouts. Many say that power left with every great Mongolian Yokozuna who hung up the white rope. Without them, sumo had lost that spark, that intensity. And those who were supposed to fill the emptiness they left behind, the ones next in line for the rank, the Ozeki, were more caught up nursing injuries left and right. As spectators who demand for more action from the title holders, we often forget to remind ourselves that the rank of Ozeki is sumo's ring of fire. It's a constant balancing act between achieving the marvelous feat of winning two championships in a row to reach Yokozuna and evading a dreadful demotion that could mean a whole restart of grinding to win another 33 matches to regain the title, all while carrying the burden of displaying sumo that is worth being called a champion against the strongest wrestlers in all of professional sumo, anything less than the disappointment from insatiable fans set in. Since 1897, there have been 50 incredible sumo wrestlers who have reached the rank of Ozeki but failed to attain the requirement of reaching the rank of Yokozuna, a testament to how the rank is a walk across a tight rope. Ozeki Kayo and Ozeki Chiyo Taikai hold the record of longest serving Ozeki in the modern era. They held the rank for 65 tournaments before demotion or retirement. Kayo, known as the greatest Ozeki of all time, has the most championships won with five yusho in his 11 years at the rank. But among the list of active wrestlers, the bitter reality of what it means to be Ozeki is seen in the careers of sumo wrestlers Tochinoshin and Takayasu. They were able to capture the hearts of many sumo fans during their campaign to gain the title of Ozeki, which needed 33 wins across three consecutive grand tournaments. They showed power, unbelievable strength, and most of all, promise. However, injuries would plague both wrestlers once they had reached Ozeki. Takayasu fell from the rank due to an injury to his left elbow and lower back pain, while a fractured rib prevented Tochinoshin from regaining the Ozeki rank when he got relegated for the second time. But you can't place all the blame on the injuries they have sustained. It's the harsh requirement that Ozeki have to constantly earn majority wins or risk a demotion that should also share that to blame. Yokozuna can sit out tournaments without consequences to their rank when they are injured, but an Ozeki, despite having nearly the same pressure to perform well, is not given this privilege. After losing their ranks, 
Takayasu has fallen to Maegashira 7 in the January 2022 Banske, and in the recent tournaments, injuries have forestalled an effective campaign to an Ozaki promotion. But it's a lot more grim for former Ozaki Tochinoshin, who is now at the bottom of the low division at Maegashira 15, with the threat of being kicked out of the top division right on his tails. A re-promotion to the champion rank he once held drifts further away. The Georgian wrestler is now 34, with severe knee damage. Yet this 2022, the year opened with a January tournament promising the rise of a new Ozeki, Mitake Umi, who not only achieved an amazing 13-win record to complete the 33 wins needed for the promotion, but also won the tournament championship in a clean match against the new and dominant Yokozuna Terunofuji. Mitake Umi's performance shed some light to the dimming shine of the current Ozeki wrestlers who will be in Kadoban in the March tournament. But even so, I have to cut Ozeki Takakesho and Ozeki Shodai some slack. I can't imagine the toll this rank must have on their body, mind, and spirit. This rank is a lonely place to be. An endless exhausting labor to hold the fort and win the battle. Almost tasting the glory, but never quite there yet. In every tournament this 2022, I'll watch the Ozeki wrestlers with a lot more compassion and root for them in every match. As much as I would love to see two trains crashing into each other in every tachi, I, I'd rather curb my taste for blood on the dohyo to see long careers and good sumo from the men known as Sumo Ozeki. Thanks for watching the video, I just wanted to take some time to say that this is the first installation of a series of videos I am making for this channel that features the Ozeki rank in celebration of the new Ozeki Mitake Umi. So I hope you look forward to the series and check out the other videos that I will be publishing until the March tournament. And anyway, I hope you've been also noticing that there is some slight upgrade on the editing and writing of the recent videos on this channel because I feel I definitely had leveled up even just a little bit in the production value because of joining Skillshare who are also the sponsors of this video. With Skillshare's thousands of classes and almost all kinds of topics, it's actually made my year very productive and full of learning so far. And that's why viewers of this channel are able to get a month free trial of Skillshare to discover the platform for the first 1,000 people to use the link. Because I also want you to go on this journey of creativity and growth with me. Once you join Skillshare through the link in the description, you will be able to access their premium classes that are launched every week like this one, which I have been personally taking. Find your style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity with Andy J. Pisa, which has been helping me find more creative ways to visualize the script I write for the channel. There are no ads once you become a member and the classes now come in multiple languages like French, Portuguese, and German. So I hope you consider giving that time to yourself to discover more things about you, like how you're also discovering Sumo with me. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon. Bye!